Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to another episode of our Legendary Looter campaign. We pick things up for episode 6 from turn 27 in the spring season of 188. So as we approach the 190 uh, start date, uh, we're cleaning out the bandits. Uh, Zhang Yan's going to get wiped by us soon. We have them on the run. Um, this army in particular was able to withstand a ambush, offensive ambush by them and Zhang die. Okay, just a random guy. Okay. Let's take him out. Your victory, we will take that. And that should definitely brighten the mood twice. That's two heroic victories back to back. Uh, do we want ourselves a bandit character? Whew, that's not bad. Vayne's really bad. Hmm, we'll pass. I don't want to actually have another one on our roster. We have way too many people. We'll just Apologies release him for some money. And we're gunning for this, because if you notice, this is level 1, which means there is no garrison. Oh, maybe there is for bandits. There's no garrison for Han units at level 1, but very small. We can take care of that, and it's going to allow us to take a free win here. Uh, meanwhile, where they actually have some land, we will take this level 3. Um, we can just delegate this. They ran both little armies away. I don't know what I'm going to do with those little armies. It would be best if they suicide back into me. Um, if they want to go for the Lumberyard, that's fine too. Big red news. What can they really do? Because they probably will take attrition at this point too. So I'm not too concerned there. Uh, we left off with Hua Xiong willing to join us, but he worked for Liu Bell. So he's maybe a spy. Uh, Fierce Beast is not that good of a bonus, so we can probably just pass up on him. Uh, he does come with an armor, I think, so that's one good thing, but unfortunately, we're gonna say no. Does he come with more than just the armor? No, just a silver. I mean, we could hire him, strip the armor, and then release him. Or well, just like how she has a bow. Well, she. we can actually recruit her. I mean, she's willing to spy, so I know she's... Uh, hold on. Let's see what she has going for her. Wise, that's good. Artful is so-so. It's not bad. Yeah, maybe from all this, she's the only one I'm kind of interested in recruiting. Level 4 is not that good. Hard to keep happy. Um, we'll see. We'll see what we do here. Alright, it's spring. We pick a new reform. We're gunning for Onyx Dragons. Not necessarily for the unit, but definitely for the extra trade route. And uh, maybe some trade port upgrades once we get to Hedong. Um, Yeah, we'll just take that. The level 4 private workshop upgrade there. The three strategies of Huang Shugong. So I think today we will talk about these military books. There should be four of them. We already talked about The Art of War, which is uh, definitely one that's very recognizable for everyone. Uh, Faction-wise speed boost. You see that it's grouped together in a set with uh, Wei Laozi, The Three Strategies of Huang Shugong, and The Six Secret Teachings. Uh, all four of these books, surprise, surprise, are military war manuals, and they're part of um, a classic collection. I think someone asked me a couple episodes ago about, are there real sets of books um, in Chinese history? Yes, there's a bunch of sets of books, usually in fours. There's usually like the four classics of medicine, which we talked about last time. And we talked about um, there's the four classics for Confucianism and then the five books. Uh, those are often grouped together. We'll talk about those later. And then there are things like the four classic literature, which includes Three Kingdoms. Romance of Three Kingdoms one of the four classic literature, along with works like Journey to the West, um, The Dream of Red Chambers, and Water Margin. Uh, so they are a lot of sets. And for war manuals, there's a set of seven. Um, it was grouped together during the Song Dynasty, and all four of these books are part of that set of seven. Um, we talked about Art of War, so I think for these books, it's hard to kind of talk about the material co or content that's inside. Pretty much, I'm going to talk about who the book is written by or who it's kind of framed for. So Huang Shugong here is a real historical uh, figure who was a strategist during the early periods of or the late periods of Qin Dynasty. Uh, he was from Xiapi, um, which is in-game. You know, it's right over here. He, he's from this area. And he was myth mythified later on in history uh, to be one of these Taoist saints, uh, basically ascended. Uh, but historically, he's a real person. He did uh, write a war manual 
And the war menu that he wrote here, or Huang Shi Gong Sanze, with three broad stroke strategies, uh, was given to Zhang Liang, who was the strategist for Liu Bang, helping him establish uh, the Han Dynasty as a whole. So that's this book. And for the six secret teachings, or it's called Liu Tao,、um, it's six scrolls of war manual. That's why it's called the six secret teachings.、Uh, there's nothing too secretive about it.、Um, it's written by、uh, Jiang Ziya, or it's often called the Tai Gong,、uh, Tai Gong Liu Tao. So Jiang Ziya is the strategist for Zhou Wu Wang, who founded the Zhou Dynasty. So the period of Spring Autumn and Warring State belongs in the Zhou Dynasty. Uh, the founding,、uh, I guess you can call him king at the time,、uh, of the Zhou Dynasty to overthrow the Shang Dynasty,、uh, used the strategist called Jiang Ziya, who、um, left this book of、uh, six scrolls on details about war.、Um, it's in the, it's a di very different format than most war manuals. This one's more of a conversational one, where it's recording conversations between the strategist and the king. Uh, talking about different aspects of war, managing the war, like logistics, strategies, all sorts of stuff. So it's very comprehensive. And、uh, Wei Liao Zi, do we have it unlocked? We might. Yeah, there we go. So Wei Liao Zi is a. It's let's see, Wei Liao Zi. It's a strategist. So Wei here stands for Kingdom of Wei. And or actually no,、uh, Wei Liao is a person. Wei Liao Zi. Yeah, right. I think the word they use.、Oh, I don't remember the actual word because it's confusing to remember. Because I believe the person who wrote this is called Wei Liao, right? But it's a different character for Wei, I think. And I that the the reason why it's kind of confusing is because he worked for the Kingdom of Wei during the Warring Kingdoms, not during Three Kingdoms, right? There's a separate、uh, Kingdom of Wei, and the Kingdom of Wei during the Warring States was one of these first. Uh, military powerhouses to arise out of the Seven Kingdoms.、Uh, people know that the Qin Dynasty, Qin Kingdom, eventually went one and became a dynasty. But Wei is in this region,、um, which is why you know Commander of Wei right here.、Uh, it's this entire region here, and Wei was like the first kingdom to kind of rise up as a military power.、Um, there was a lord, I guess I, we can call them kings. I guess、uh, Wei Wu Wang had a son.、Uh, his son is the one who. Had the strategies work, strategists work under him, and the one who wrote the book, and they formed the first sort of special elite unit of this period,、uh, which is called Wei Wu Zhu,、uh, which is this just elite infantry, heavily armored,、uh, heavily armored elite trained infantry.、Uh, they're the first kind of prof professional soldiers of the time, and because they trained these、um, forces and were the first one to kind of go for this type of military approach. They were able to take a lot of this area called、uh, Hexi, right? This area right here, or Xihe,、uh, Xihe,、uh, basically the east, the, the the banks around the Yellow River where it turns. And this is a war between them and Qin. So Qin and Wei fought many, many times around、um, this area for this resource. And、uh, there's a very common phrase,、um, Wei Wei Jiu Zhao. I don't know if anyone's familiar with that, but that's the downfall eventually of Wei Wu Zhu when they would eventually get annihilated in a couple campaigns, where、um, the Kingdom of Wei was attacking the Kingdom of Zhao, and Zhao went to Qi to ask for help, and、uh, instead of going to the battlefield to go help them, they went for the capital of Wei when the army was out, and then when the army retreated back to try to protect the capital, they ambushed them.、Um, this happened actually in two different campaigns. They fell for the same trick twice. And the second time they fell for it, the most of the Wei Wu Zhu forces got wiped, and then the Kingdom of Wei pretty much, you know, declined pretty heavily after that.、Uh, but those are just three military manuals that we have in the game right now,、uh, plus Art of War, so technically four, and they form a set together. I have no clue what the set bonuses are, so we'll find out when we get a set completed.、Um, we will upgrade this. Hmm. I don't like that building, but we'll take it for now until we upgrade, and then we're gonna go state workshop, land development, and possibly government support, just because we got a little bit of extra peasantry here. Alternatively, we can go for like another income source as well. I think this is fine for now. We、we'll、upgrade that. What else do we have going on? Okay, we want to poly corruption reduction already. 
you know, right now we're very uh, at the beginning of our expansion system, but there's just never going to be income here, so we might as well start making that corruption reduction building. Okay, these are all good, and I don't think we're doing much. This army is definitely struggling a little bit with the supply issue, um, <laughs> which is going to not allow them to kind of heal up. They might even lose some health. They're fine for this turn. They'll lose health next turn, but if we win that, we can recall everyone to heal. Legends a little beat, but we should be okay. Uh, people are angry with us. All right, he leveled up. We'll go up. Wang Kai. Right, I mean, at the end of the day, they just want to come out and do stuff, but they can't because I, I don't have any money. I have five. <laughs> it's really sad. Um, we'll keep expanding. We'll try to hit this second Marquise. That will give us some extra administrator options, and then maybe we can keep a little bit more people happy. Yeah, we should get there once we uh, conquer all of Zhang Yan's land, so... Let's just continue here. No one's gonna leave us, and that's that's the main thing. Okay, everyone picking on Coral. A violent inheritance. It's happened. The governance of the Yi province has long been steeped in violent uprisings. Some say previous leaders were despot taxing their people. That's definitely true, and ruling unfairly. But others whispered that the new governor Liu Yan is even more troublesome. Not for his cruelty, of which he has little, but for his ambition. So he's gone, right? He's ditched. Okay, so at least we got the siege done before that. I mean, we technically didn't need him. And uh, we have a room for new air. So. Okay, we see. Okay, so he's no longer in the family because she died. We, we let her go and then she died of an unfortunate event somehow, which is a little bit random. So we can just adopt. Um, oh man, who's the best choice here? That's the question. Like, I don't think Tauren's automatically the best choice because he just has like plus two public order, and that's really it. That's really that's that's all that's going for him, and the fact that he's a commander, right? So we get like six points here from satisfaction. But if we take a look at, say, Luo Jun, Guardian People is worth ten percent to all, right? We get that. We will still get 25% redeployment eventually. We will get 20, uh, one extra army, but that, that's really about it. There's not much faction-wide stuff we can get from him. Five satisfaction plus three, so technically eight. I also don't love it. I might actually use Liu Bu. It'll keep him happy. We get the discount for cavalry and we get Liu Bu as a son. What can go wrong in that case, right? Um, we pick up 25% redeployment right away. We pick up plus one army eventually, and, and that's that's probably it. There's there's not any other faction-wide stuff we can expect. We can maybe reroll disloyal down the line. Hmm. Yeah, I think with our current roster, that might be the best move. We can also adopt the bow girl and use her bow and, and her character as another marriage bait down the line. But we definitely don't need to do that now. Basically adoption time. Oh, we don't have enough money for adoption. All right, we're gonna farm some battles. They're really not giving us the free win, are they? Okay, we fight this, and uh, we prove to them we can get the free win. Let's go. Alrighty, so there's definitely a lot of interior towers, but maybe from the side it'd be better. Yeah. There's just not that many enemy units. Lupu himself can take care of this, I'm sure. Charge! They don't know where we are. Troop, 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 troop. Don't take too much damage. Alright, we'll capture it. Uh, we can actually use him to get killed to give us a heal if we need that. Of course, we'll capture everything. They blocked both of these. We're going to try to break it. I don't want to go next to any other tower, so we'll just break it. It'll take a little bit of time.
Yeah, why don't you guys come in as well? We just have to kill two groups, right? The rest will just route. I want to kill well, those are the captains. I guess we'll kill this group. Looks like they're coming. Okay, let's not break it then. If he's gonna come over, we just kill him here. We don't want to get double teamed. Charge! I don't care if I get dismounted. There we go. Just make them white flag and then wait for the next one to show up. And plus we gotta wait for cooldowns. Oh, not coming. Okay, we'll smash this open. Mm, they are coming. Turn white. There we go. And we wait for army loss to kick in. No? Oh, I guess he doesn't feel outnumbered because uh, we technically don't outnumber him. Door is open. Come on over. The towers. Okay, they're outside the range. Nope, nope. Get in there. Now we smash. Oh, look at that. The epicenter of that build usage. Alright, a nice little triple heroic victory for Li Bu himself. We don't really care. Uh, actually, this is okay. Because this group is getting recalled. So there is no penalty to this army's replenishment. They're obviously going to pick up someone. Um, oh, they could pick up Huang Gai right now. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I, I'm still debating between... Like, potentially he's better, just because we get plus one assignment, that's really the main difference, and also a lot of authority difference. Uh, Brave Hunter is really nothing going for it. Lord Jun has this, and he could pick up Honest, which is usually quite easily picked up by champions. And his faction-wide contribution would just be redeployment. We get 8 points of satisfaction right off the bat. We can't take advantage of the... Like, making him an administrator, which is probably something we want to do, right? It's like 10% to one place or 10% to every place. If we put it that way, then, you know, you just go with him being adopted. Alright, we adopt him. We have enough now, right? I haven't checked. No, we're a little short. Oh, not just a little short. Okay, we crush them. Yes, we want you to run so you can drag them into the battle with you. And we don't need to waste our time here. One guy needs to level up quite a bit. He needs to hit level 6 for us to give him the unique cavalry. Oh, Tian Lu. Um... One of Lu Bu's generals later down the line, but nothing really fancy about him. I'll take, I'll just take the money. Eight hundred is enough for us to adopt. They will still run. Right. That's okay. They're kind of trapped with us, and then we set up attack for that. I don't know. Is it level zero? No, it's level one. No, it's level zero. See the build? But there's no garrison. Hold on, can I just take it? I could just proxy someone out. 
pay for their unit once. Yeah, oh, uh, oh, well, he summoned someone. Oh, and it's not level one. Our intel is incorrect. Oh, right, because it's a bandit version. Right, we're looking at our version. That's why it's weird. Okay, okay. That, that makes a lot more sense. So we need the army to come back eventually. Uh, we need air because our happiness is just way too low. So that has good faction wide bonus, but like we don't need that right now. It's got to be him, right? We get eight points of authority, which is the highest we can boost. Can we grab this? Let's see if we can get four points here. No, only three. Mm, out of money too. We had enough, but then we had to summon to try to check that. We'll cancel something. Welcome back to the family. Is he on cooldown? I can't make him air? Okay, not this turn at least. We gotta make sure no one's gonna leave us. Why is he suddenly 5? Oh well, lack he he's gonna bounce back. That's a good thing because he's in the army now. Okay, we're fine. We have 2,000 left. This is our main income place. Okay, kind of where we are. Let's just continue and then we'll come grab this when we have our force to move back. Okay, everyone join our war. 8 point satisfaction, 10%. Not much, but something. And they get along, so that's also nice. Do we do we want to finish them off? It wastes a little bit of time. Having them run around is kind of annoying though, so let's finish them off. Take the money. It's not that bad in terms of traveling distance. I think it's going to be corruption reduction everywhere. Except for our only one money making place. Um, I think we still want to upgrade that. That's probably still the goal. Oh, Taiyuan's really bad, right? Only one building slot? Let's get at least two building slots first. Fifteen, and eighteen lack of purpose will go away. But for these three, we basically just have to summon them and make them stand on the field and they would be fine, essentially. I'll pay for the units. And plus, there's no garrison here, so we should probably make them stand here just to stand guard in case they come attack us. We'll move the highest level one first. Or also just take it by walking over. Alright, so they will start getting rid of that desire for higher office. You see, the heroic victory is giving him 37 points. That's why he's so happy with us. Yeah, we can summon them three again on the field. We can have all of them as armies for now. Tarin's the only one doing assignments for us. 
Yeah, that's all we can really do. Unless we want to take a look at... Ooh. We're the only one who doesn't... Who didn't, like, attack him. He might die. I don't know if he'll pay us. He'll be able to pay us 10 turns. So I'm gonna... Maybe discount some of the potential here. Like, 225 looks nice. Okay, it is nice. We'll take it. Pay us, you know, four or five turns and we're probably good on that money. This will take uh, cash. Looks like Liu Bei has stopped expanding, which is interesting. Maybe we can still grab some of that later. But our economy is doing quite nicely, I have to say. Hmm, with that upgrade, I think we can get rid of this now. Let us continue. Alright, Giants summoned himself out again. Feuds. War. Oh, picked up item. Master Craftsman. Hold on. He's getting six points of authority, which isn't giving us any change here, so we're just gonna... This is also six points of authority. But, you know, it's even better. Action-wide money. That's pretty useful for administrators, just for stats, but we have income on that one, so there's really no need to change. Some extra population growth, perhaps. We're at our army limit. They can't reach us, so I guess the Bulls group has to sit until we get another administrator. Uh, we're basically waiting for this. Okay, level 4 there. Okay, let us continue here. As long as Colonel's not dead, all the same. Wait a second. Ah, about the same stuff. I can't boost it anymore. Uh, but he does have potential for future retinues, unless... Yeah, we're keeping the bow for now. Yeah, you grab this. A little bit happier for you. Hmm. We gotta be a little bit more cautious against his stack. We don't have reach yet, but we will. I think it's time to get rid of this. Man, we might start thinking about throwing a couple forge reforms. Okay. Uh, we'll save money. Let's continue. Ah, the impiety of Don't Rule. Many great virtues are demanded of those who deem fit to rule when someone lacking virtue takes control. Only chaos can sue this Dongzhuo as such a person. It would be a calamity to the state if you were allowed into the capital. Well, is Liu Hong dead yet? He's not, so... We're not that concerned yet, but it's 89. It's not 90 yet, so we're getting warned. Oh. You're fine. Um... I'm interested, but at the same time, I don't think we're going to recruit him right off the bat. Uh, 
We can't reach it. So we're going to have to end our turn in ambush. And I think... I think we're going to switch these over to range units. Yeah, so I think we're going to go for this. And he will just be the front line, and then he will be the cavalry. I think I'm going to do forges. I'll go to level 2 forge to get items periodically, and then we'll try to get the reform, but then you need a small regional city. Like, we get 20% industry out of that, and this probably max to level 4 for us, so about 250, 250, so 50, you get 50 back. And if we get 50 back, it pays for itself, technically. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's do it. The other, the other option is just conscription. Well, I don't think we'll be recruiting armies there, or like we don't really need that much seasonal deployment when our army limit right now is only two. His lack of purpose is going down, but his levels is way too high. We give him Quill Dragon already, yet still super hard to keep him happy. We're gonna have to give him a poor position very soon. Anyways, he's good for now. We can maybe draw them in as bait. Come attack us. Okay, we ambush the ambush faction. And we will be taking them on. I don't care about their reinforcement, rather just deal the morale damage to them. And let's jump into the fight. Oh man, it's raining. No, don't want that. Um, this is their escape zone. Kind of tilted, but that's probably where we will deploy. Basically the idea here is like, don't let them run away. We'll still use fire. It wouldn't spread in the forest, but it would still cause the morale hits. Yeah, we're not really fighting this like an ambush battle, but. That's fine. We'll ambush them with the Hail of Arrows. After they get hit with these. Look at that. Fire coming down. Why are they not firing? They not see them? Oh, here they go. They're starting. And the flamethrowers. There's just no hope. They backed off though. That's kind of smart.
imagine if it wasn't raining. And where is Zhang Ye himself? Did he run off already? Oh, he's hidden. He's in the forest somewhere. I mean, Zhang Yan should be unbreakable. He is stubborn at the start, so he's not going anywhere. Xu Yu, <laughs> should we let Xu Yu live? His background's not exactly positive. Oh, he does have Stifling Deluge, so I can't use the Pale Barrel to kill him. Giant's somewhere in here, we're gonna find him. Oh, they even have cavalry in here. What else do you guys have? Oh, John. Wait, no, that's cavalry. Where's John yet? Oh, we showed them. Where is he? Is he here? Oh, there he is. Ah, oh, he shut down the... He's gonna route. We'll let you route. Please route. Negative ninety. Please route. Right, that's the win. Ah, Sio got captured. We'll execute him. <laughs> the item's worth more than the 200. Right, they summon someone to replace him. And uh, Zhang is not back. Action's gonna get wiped. I could hold on. I could make things a little bit easier. We do have a burn officer behind as well, so they could give us a boost. Delegate. There's no other fight around. We'll have time to heal back up. That's a lot of damage though. Um 300, we'll take that. Giants wiped. Now, Zheng Jiang might still spawn here um, once we get to 190. The chance to see her. Get that conversion going. Now you get to lead. Hmm. We'll take that. The stats a little bit better, but fatigue reduction's not bad. Imagine getting multiple ones. You can almost create your own fatigue immune units. Um, I think Champion also has a fatigue resistance. So if we have like three of these items, you could possibly get a whole army of fatigue re uh, immune units. We got that post battle. Nice. Okay, wait. Is she potentially? She is from Giant's faction. 
Uh, I was like, Bandit, Sentinel, Poison Volley, but no. Not a Bandit. Okay, so we're out of sp space to expand, right, at this point. There is, obviously we can sell all the way out west. I don't know if we want to do that. I don't want to claim that either. We could feud. We could feud with other factions and take their land. But it's not that beneficial. Okay, Lobe is expanding this way. We'll recover for a couple turns. Wait for our buildings to get upgraded so we have enough prestige to get to second marquees. And then we'll plan out what we want to do after that. Lupul ranked up. Good for him. I'm gonna give you an item. Please don't be so angry. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all we can do. We have tea from trade. I might go for this reform now that all that stuff is done right we could start do some red ones just get level two four so we can start building items and since we are in the north there's potential for us to pick that up now we do want to travel to undine like that that's part of the plan but maybe we wait for the emperor to die and like the empire to dissolve wait for our opportunity a little bit I could rush this. I don't think we're upgrading this anymore. Like the only other building that we could build here maybe is conscription, but I don't think I need that. Thousand five hundred. Okay, we rush that. That give us the rank up. Perfect. Four points. Um, trade agreement is probably pretty decent for us, but I think we might want to pick up two more administrators right now. Extra assignment for... Hmm. Just whether we want to click on these little bonuses or not. Like at the end, I think I want to fill up the administrator bar. I want to fill up the trade bar. And then these might just become wasted points at that point. So I think we do something like this. And let's assign administrator, peasantry, industry. Makes sense either here or in Wei. Or actually, no, Wei doesn't make sense because it doesn't have an income on it. Taiwan needs administrator for sure. Wang Fu Song. A lot of discounting here. He doesn't have the skill tree for it, but maybe that doesn't really matter. This would be a very easy way to keep him happy. He has the all sources industry. He, he has hmm. basically vanguards are terrible administrators, but he has stern, which gives 5% industry and then 10% to all. That's not too bad. It's like his skill tree is ready here, should we just grab another one, right? Waste one skill and he'd be all set. Plus three public water as well. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm going to put him here. Industry, peasantry, just that's perfect. And then Taiyuan. Wang Fu Song just to build it up? Like 30% cost reduction. Like we don't have to get income on him. And we can swap him out after we finish building it up. Like it just becomes so much cheaper to build these things. He can become Grand Commandant. Or, yeah. Is this spring? Hold on. It's not spring, is it? It's not. So... 
no, 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 no. I think he should become Grand Excellency first, so we get the 15% from industry, and then once it's spring, we shift, we rule over. We're trying to be cheap. Thirty-one percent. We're trying to be very cheap. One guy's lack of purpose will die down, so that's fine. Legends air items good. New administrator. I want to steal Huang guys, but I think it's gonna rob him. I just want to give him more ex uh, more resolve. Actually, yeah, we'll take this one. Five percent industry. That's perfect. Yeah, nothing else. That's good here. So that's fine. It went on cooldown. Okay. Um, remove this. We'll give it to uh, Wu Jun first, I guess. I mean, we'll decide next turn. He's actually, you know, on the field, so maybe maybe he should be valued a bit more. We can summon them three again. Divorce is dying off, so it's fine. I can put them in way in case Yuan Shao comes to claim it. Okay, I think we're at a good place. One guy is not happy, but he, he will be fine. Definitely stay workshop. And we can actually now mess with tax rates. Um, I don't think we're going to be farming rebels for this campaign. At least not now. So we'll actually let everyone bounce back. And we can just continue here. Alright, Ma Teng declare war on Gongdu. Gongdu declare war on Ma Teng. The death of the Emperor. It's happened. Yeah, he died of natural causes. A bit young, but died. Empress takes over as a regent. The kids are too young. And I'm guessing Dong Zhuo is gonna swoop in very soon. And we're gonna see a very interesting event chain. See how we can maybe fight them back. So I'll let them heal up. Yeah, he is on the field. I think he gets this one. And uh, that means you get a slightly worse version. I mean, he's also on the field, but he's not with the main army. Take this. So since you're not becoming our heir, I think he goes straight for Heavenly Presence. Okay, while we prepare for... The, the events after the Emperor's death, we will continue to build our economy out a little bit. We forgot about these. We got two extra. Not gonna trade with Dong Zhuo for obvious reasons. Um, Ying Shao is right over there. He's very small, but I guess if any of them die, it's, it's fine. We can just grab new trade partners. Lu Kang down in Lu Jiang. I'm guessing he should be pretty safe. Oh, he has a daughter. Right, well, I'm not interested. You're that poor down there? 9.2. Oh, right, I have a lot of food too. Let me offer everyone at least one food to spice up the deal a little. We were talking about what? 10.17? Uh, 
10.7? No, 10.17. .7. No, 11.7. That's what that's what I tried to say. 10.17. 11.7. Or Wow, he he's he's pretty loaded. Maybe cash would be the way here. Yep, definitely cash would be the way here. And we'll get another trade agreement. Um, Hanfu is quite small right now. Ingsha, we'll, we'll trade with him. We'll offer him one food as well. And cash, unless he has items. Nope. Uh, so we're talking about 12 points. They've been all saving up cash. They have nothing to spend it on because they only have a little piece of land and they don't really have armies. There we go. All right. Feeling rich again. Maybe rush some buildings. We'll go income heavy here. Oh, can't build anything here? That's a bad brush. This is a reform issue. Hold on, what if we cancel this, build this, which is cheaper, which means we have enough money to... Oh, we're a little short. Uh, 900, 465. Uh, we'll do this first. The forge, the tier 1 doesn't do much. Okay, that's all the money we have. A ministry level up more food for us. And Huang Gai is still complaining. Let's continue. Yuan Shu declare war on Ma Teng. Okay. The eunuchs kill He Jin. Okay, He Jin's dead. And then He Jin's men kills the eunuchs. Uh, Cao Cao and Yuan Shao in particular here. Uh, I guess not in game because Cao Cao is now his own faction. Population building damaged. It's kind of funny to see all these events. I mean, they're triggering, so all the bugs have been fixed out. Uh, this is about to get hit. Faction supports. Okay, they'll crush it. Give those men something to do. So what's going on in the capital? So he's dead. This army's gone, basically. Oh, they could, they could replace him. Right, they could put someone here and the army can be saved. I'm just waiting for Dong Zhuo to make a move. I mean, they have all these forces here. Yuan Shao is all the way out here. He's probably going to ask for his own land, and then he's going to come with one of these? Hmm. We'll worry about it when the time comes. Alright, back to messing with our economy. We're not upgrading that. So basically, this is just reform law. Complete build. Uh, rush. We should probably rush this, just because this is where we're making most of our money. Build that, 1,400 left, which we probably shouldn't rush anything at this point because we can't build anything after that rush, so let's continue. Okay, that's still normal stuff. The Warlord has lost their Imperial Palace. Dong Zhuo has taken it. Right, so... Leaves as the Emperor dissolves. Impressor vassalizes puppet. There's been transition to Dong Zhuo. Gets confederated. Alright, here comes our missions. Lord Lu Zhi. The Empress Dowager has thrown her lot in with a cabal of the corrupt eunuchs, who now wields absolute power over the Han and the child emperor. Prepare yourself, the conflict is inedible. Well, I mean, they already resolved all this. He Jin died, and then now Dong Zhuo's ready in the capital. The order must be restored. The eunuch's ambitions knows no bound. The child emperor must be liberated from their clutches at all cost. Or new order established for all for the good of all. 
Do not stand idly by. Luger, through your wisdom and strange, guide the people to a brighter future. Continue to build our power. I mean, it's a little late. They should have done this before He Jin's death. That would make more sense. Liu Qi left the fall. He's... Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, he doesn't like the dad. No, no, no. We know this. Let me just get rid of that. A lot of characters. So I guess we have officially made it to 190. Or we haven't, but we're about to. And Dongzhu has taken over. There's no more empires. Right. Close call. And does anyone come with any good items? Horse? Not really. Okay. So at this point, we can feel free to declare war on anyone we want. Techn technically, I mean, assuming we don't have any deals with them. Don't join us, have uh, military access. So there is something there. We could cancel it, or we can just bid our time and wait and see. Um, his capital is still in Shuofang, I think. Yeah, so the Emperor is here. So if we want to steal the Emperor, we would just go to Shuofang, I guess. He doesn't hold Chang'an. Yuan Yi holds Chang'an. This is Yuan Shao's uncle. I will take care of them. Chase them down. I mean, we will probably end up creating another army, depending on who we have to fight, that's the question. With 7,000 here, I think we rush this, grab this. We want this to be a small city. Oh, the Leon Rebels. They're still on the map? Oh, they're here. They have one copper mine remaining. Yeah, I think we just continue and see what happens in the 190. Okay, the royalties are sticking together. Rise of the Bandit Queen, asking us for land. Of course, refuse. Action Council is ready. The Nanman forces have spawned. Right, so that's why our army is nearby. We'll fight them at the start of next episode. Um, I don't know if they'll run away when we fight them or not, but we can grab them as reinforcement right behind them. Uh, pretty much we'll eliminate them right off the bat. If we can get the capture on her, it'd be great, but she starts out level 6, which is kind of ridiculous. Uh, so maybe we won't be able to get the capture. We'll try our best, though, and uh, we'll go from there. I think, I mean, Yuan Shao, I don't know if he's going to ask for that or not. But we can also refuse him and fight him as well. I mean, we was on guard here for that purpose. And we can start picking our targets. Like, maybe maybe we start with Bian Zhang, take He Dong. He Dong's very lucrative. We can grab that first. Um, have a more concrete border here. Because he, he can't, I can't cross over to Luoyang. He also can't cross over to me. So that's a nice way to defend each other in the shallows. And then we can work our way behind his lines to grab the rest of his land. So we'll just see how things goes. Maybe we'll go take back the capital. I kind of want to see the transition of events, like leading to the start of the harvest season 190, which would be like when the base game starts, just to see where things are. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's been 
nice cleaning out the bandits. We still have one more to take care of, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye!